Let's learn about calorimetry. Get out your science notebook. Here's the essential question. How is calorimetry used to determine the enthalpy of a reaction? We're going to start by asking a question. How much energy is in a cheese ball? Well, you might know to look at the calories on a nutritional label, but how do scientists know what values to write? And how do they know that this is the amount of calories that a cheese ball has? Well, we need to understand what a calorie is. A calorie is just a unit of energy. It's defined as the quantity of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of pure water. This is almost exactly our definition of specific heat, but it's very particular to water. And we're gonna learn why in a minute. Now there's a little bit of food trickery going on when we talk about calories. In science, a calorie is written with a lowercase c. That's a little bit different on food labels. On food labels, calorie is written with a capital C, and they're slightly different values. They're related, but one capital calorie is equal to 1,000 lowercase calories, also sometimes called a kilocal or a kilo, which means 1,000 calorie, which is a unit of energy. Why the difference? Well, to a person who's making food and wanting to sell food, it feels a lot better to convince somebody to eat 150 calories of something than 150,000 calories of something. So it's a little bit of food trickery going on. But calories are just units of energy. In fact, the unit of energy we typically use is joules, and one kilocalorie is equivalent to 4,184 joules of energy. In fact, in some countries, they use joules on their labels. Well, this leads us to a calorimeter. A calorimeter is a device that lets us figure out what a calorie is or how much calories food has. Specifically, this device uses water to do that because we know the specific heat of water. By knowing the specific heat of water, we can measure the enthalpy of a reaction. Take a look at this very simple DIY calorimeter. This is made out of a styrofoam cup. It's not as professional as the ones they use in a real food scientist lab, but it gets the job done. Here what happens is we can start a chemical reaction. Now this chemical reaction will either release energy into the water or it will absorb energy from the water. Well, let's think about that for a second. The reaction will have equal but opposite delta H or equal but opposite enthalpy of the water. This is just system versus the surroundings. So when we deal with calorimeters, we're going to be using the specific heat equation. Now here's that specific heat equation rearranged to solve for Q, which is enthalpy. Q is the amount of energy gained or released by water or the reaction, and that's measured in joules. M is mass measured in grams. C is the specific heat. And delta T is the change in temperature. Well, let's take a look at an example and actually go work through a problem together. Here it's asking, how much energy does a cheese ball have if it releases enough energy to cause 100 grams of water to raise 48 degrees Celsius in a calorimeter? Remember, a calorimeter uses water to determine the enthalpy of a reaction. Now here, our system is the cheese ball. This is ultimately what we're interested in, but we're going to have to figure out the system's amount of enthalpy in a roundabout way by using the water. Remember, our cheese ball is releasing energy into the water. So the energy flow is going into our surroundings, which is the water and the thermometer. Now we're going to assume that all of the energy is perfectly transferred between the system and the surroundings. If we're using the more professional calorimeters, this is more likely what's going to happen. And the DIY calorimeters, maybe not so much, but it's okay. This is just high school chemistry and we're just going to assume that all energy is perfectly being transferred. So to do calorimetry, we actually are going to focus on the water or the surroundings. Now we know a lot about the water. We know the mass of the water is 100 grams. We know the specific heat of water is the standard, which is 4.184 joules per gram Celsius. That's how much energy it takes to change one gram of water by one degree Celsius. And we also know the temperature change of water. It's 48 degrees Celsius in total. 
If I plug this into that specific heat equation solving for Q, I'm going to figure out how much energy water absorbed. Now, this isn't what the question's asking, but it's going to help us figure out what the question, what the answer is. Now, let's focus on our system, specifically the cheese ball. Remember, the cheese ball is just opposite of the enthalpy change of the water. All of the energy the water absorbed was the energy that the cheese ball released. So we could just change the sign of our enthalpy change. This time it's negative 19,664 joules, which were released by the cheese ball. That's the answer we're looking for. Now we could go a little bit further if we knew how many joules per calorie, we can determine that there's about 4.6 kilocalories or capital calories for per the, each of the cheese balls. That's the end of our notes. That's how calorimetry works. Take a moment to review and highlight key terms, ponder and ask questions, and summarize and answer the essential question. Good luck.